actual material in itself, as you know, is one of the strongest materials in the world. You can grow enough hemp in three months that it's going to take in what? How many years for trees? It's something like 10, 10 years. years? Yeah. In 10 years. And so there is new opportunities in the energy sector, in the construction sector. And as you can see here, this is pretty fucking dope. You now just don't have to buy regular wood. You can now buy hemp wood. Uh, that's going to be done by Fibonacci LLC. And they've just secured a lease on 11,000 square foot facility in the state of Kentucky. Damn, that's a big facility. And not gonna lie, if when I like get my dream house uh, in, in a few years, I'm definitely gonna have a house made out of hemp wood. <laughs> All right, number five. Hemp farmers are making a killing in the CBD industry. Yes, that's right. Farmers across the United States have been rushing into hemp ever since President Donald Trump signed the Farm Bill into law. But also, the legislation moved hemp from the government's controlled substance category, triggering a surge in demand for cannabidiol or CBD products. And that is what's driving up demand. So big moves hemp. Uh, hemp is just making massive waves of CBD. Nice. So on to number six. As you all know, anyone that is involved in the CBD hemp industry has had issues with accessing credit, being able to process credit cards. And uh, it wasn't as clear as when people thought it was going to happen back in December when the hemp bill passed. So Mitch McConnell and U.S. Senator Ron White, and a Democrat and Republican, have sent letters to top federal banking and financial regulatory systems to state that, look, hemp is legal, you can do it, it's okay, make it happen. And so it's good to know that there are strides being made to help uh, not only the big guys, but people like us who need this kind of processing online in order to survive. Very crucial, very crucial. Uh, yeah, so next up, number eight, MYM Partners, uh, I'm sorry, MYM Nutraceuticals Inc., a Vancouver, Canada-based company, plans to grow 3,000, uh, they partnered to grow 3,000 acres of CBD-rich hemp in the Navajo Nation. Yes, they have tried, uh, they have uh, combined with the tribal entity, the Navajo Nation, to make a plan to produce 3,000 acres of CBD-rich hemp. Big moves. Uh, the, yet again, this is a Vancouver, Canada-based company. All right, and next on, back into Canada. Uh, cannabis wholesalers are, are reporting a shortage in CBD. And so that can tell you a little bit about the demand that is there. There is a super high demand for CBD. Uh, the only way that they can actually get it is through territory authorized cannabis retailers or by federally approved medical sellers of cannabis. And so right now, they just aren't able to get as much as they want. It is a challenge, but they are trying to import more, and that is a good sign for people who are farming CBD in the U.S. Boom. Next up, a little coverage on uh, USDA. They made a statement today, earlier Tuesday today, um, about their plans with uh, moving forward, their uh, regulations, and they are saying that they are in no rush. Uh, they plan on having everything out for 2020 farming season. So, yeah, they're going to have a little bit of time before uh, big boys in the USDA really set their shit in line. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what the news on the USDA. Finally. All right, and finally, for number 10, uh, Hawaii State of Department, uh, Health of Department, uh, Health. <laughs> Hawaii's <laughs> Department of Health is now cracking down on food products containing CBD. Now, this is not just an issue that's happening in Hawaii, but as you know, on a federal level, the FDA has already made it very clear that anything that is a food item cannot contain CBD, cannot cross state lines. It is technically illegal. And so, as you can see, states on the state level are going either two ways. You have states like Massachusetts that have given uh, emergency uh, legislation to allow for the sale of food goods with CBD, but then you've got other states like Hawaii that we're mentioning today that are actually cracking down. So if you have a shop in Hawaii and you're selling edible goods, just be aware of the fact that the health department is now going to be cracking down. So if you have it, sell it as fast as you can or eat it all before they get there. <laughs> but regardless, be compliant. Don't uh, just, go just, just yeah. kidding. Yeah. Just don't go against the State Department of Health. Just bad. That's just not good. Um, all right. Yeah. Dr. Jasmine! So we are about to bring on our very special guest this evening, Dr. Jasmine yes. Chanel. She is a veterinarian, she works with pets, and she is knowledgeable in CBD for animals. So we are very excited to have her on. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and patch her on, huh? Hey,
All right. Woo! I'm loving all the hearts out there. Let's show some love for Dr. Uh, Jasmine here. She's dedicated some time here to talk with us. We dearly appreciate Go it. Go to CBD.how now. This is just a backup little link that we got going here. Hi, hello. Hey. <laughs> You Hi, Dr. Chanel. How are you? Hi, Dr. Chanel. I don't know if you have, you can defy <laughs> gravity and you're able to, uh, are you Spider Woman? Yeah. Uh, maybe we can, oh no, it's all good. <laughs> there we wow, go. Nice. You're like veterinarian slash part-time ninja, we thought. <laughs> oh. oh. There you go. Okay, my, my, my girl's holding the phone for me, so okay. Yeah. Yes, hello. You're streaming great, and I love that you've got books in the background. It makes you see, look super legit. You've got a beautiful <laughs> necklace on. I mean, you are serious biz. So thank you so much for coming on our show today. We know that you're a very, very busy woman, so to have someone to come take time out of their day, uh, me, Aaron, and the whole staff are always uh, very appreciative. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you. All right, so let's get this started. Aaron, I know that we have a couple questions that the community has asked us to ask you. We know you're the professional here. So Aaron's gonna start off with a couple questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so, hi, Dr. Jasmine. Um, I, I just wanna just thank you for what you do personally for, for animals, it's amazing. Um, it's, yeah, so my first question, I just wanna know, how does it feel to be in a position to, to, to help as many pets as you do? Um, how, how is that for you? For me, it's like a dream come true because I always wanted to be a vet since I was a baby. Like, that was the only dream I had. So when I was able to actually fulfill that dream and make it a reality, I felt, like, blessed and I feel highly favored. And I feel like it's my duty to give back to society because it's my passion, it's what I love. And being able to educate the public and answer their questions and help them heal their pet while also healing them, I think for me, that's what brings me the most joy. Well, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Now, when was the point in time when you were like, you know what, I'm already helping so many animals, but there's this thing coming along called CBD. At what point did you, you were like, oh my God, this could help out pets. Like, when did that light bulb click in your head? How did that come about? Um, the moment I said, oh my God, CBD is awesome, was when I moved to uh, Portland, Oregon. So I'm originally from Georgia, the South, not as advanced as the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Um, cannabis had just been made legal recreationally. Everybody was having a blast. And then I got a lot of people asking me about um, CBD and pets. And I'm like, honestly, I don't know about CBD and humans. So I went and read about that. And then I started seeing in the history books that cannabis, CBD, hemp, whatever the name you like to call it, has been used for centuries. It's been used by the Romans for their horses. It's been used by the Egyptians. And I was like, oh, okay, so it's just because mm. of federal regulations that we're not using it, the, the reefer madness. And so when I found that out, I was like, okay, I'm going to learn about it. And um, for me, it was great moving forward. Which thing, oh, you see my kitty. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, kitty? Bailey's approved, kitty cat. Yeah. yeah, so when I found that out, I was like, okay, so CTD has already been good. It's already been safe. We're just bringing it back. So we're just bringing it back. That's awesome. I love it. So that means that that pets have endocannabinoid systems too then. What? Yes, what? They do. Maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about that. Yeah, so kitties, dogs, they actually have more endocannabinoid receptors than humans do, which makes them more sensitive to um, cannabis or hemp products. That's true. And that's why when we're telling people or educating people, we're saying if you want to use hemp, um, you want to use CBD predominantly because the psychoactive properties are going to be in the THC and most of your benefits right now that we know of with research are in the CBD realm with the seizures, with the degenerative joint disease, with cancer, with that palliative care when you have animals that are just, there's nothing else that we can do. They're maxed out on all of their opiates. They're still in pain. They're not eating. That's when many people turn to cannabis. They turn to CBD because it's their last hope. And then they find out, oh, this really works. And so I have owners whose pets aren't sick, they're healthy, and they still want to use it because on the daily, they're they're just getting all the benefits for it. And I think for me, it's a wonderful way to incorporate it into integrative health. You get that Western medicine, but you also get the Eastern medicine, so you can give your animal like full the gold standard of care. 
Awesome. I, I love that. And I agree as well. And um, I, I'm wondering how responsive are the pet parents uh, that to, to, to giving them, you know, CBD that, and when, that you come across? I'm going to be honest with you. Normally I have to run them away because people are coming to me with so many questions about CBD. Oh, wow. And unfortunately for veterinarians right now, we're in a really sticky predicament because we're not able to prescribe it and they don't even want us to recommend it. But we have this knowledge and we took an oath to do no harm. And so I feel like we know the direction that we're going. We already know that it's been used for humans. We already know it's been used for pets. And so when I'm talking to owners, I tell them, I'm not able to prescribe it for you, but we can talk about it. You know, what do you want to know? What do we know? And tell me what you're using so I can help you come up with the best regimen that's right for your pet. But I'm hoping in the next few years, things are going to switch around and veterinarians are going to feel comfortable speaking up and educating the public about how amazing CBD can be because what I don't want is people going out to you know their dispensary or going online not being educated not making informed decisions when and then feeling bad or regretting what they what they purchased I agree that's yeah that's that's really awesome um, to hear that every everybody's coming to you with that many that much of a great response and just that open to it yeah they like it they like it a lot nice um, yeah, so uh, another question, um, how much CBD do you, do you recommend pet parents give their dogs and cats when they come to you? So it depends on the pet because, you know, if you go to your, your medical doctor, you say how much medication I need, they're going to ask you a couple more questions. And it's the same thing for animals. So we need to know, like, how old is your dog? What's going on? Are you taking it because they're hurting or they're sick, they're in pain? Or are you taking it more as, like, a preventative care just daily type of thing and then also what products are you using if you're using a hemp based um, uh, product that has CBD in it you're talking about less than 0.3 THC but if you're going to the dispensary and you're purchasing something for yourself and you're saying well can I share it with my dog then you're looking at different concentrations so you really want to talk to a knowledgeable veterinarian or another uh, primary care provider about what the specific ailments are and how we can match it for your animal. I will say though, that we all know about the entourage effect, right? And yeah. how great that can be. But right now with research, we just don't have all that information. And so generally we'll tell owners that stick with hemp first, it's the safest. Start with a low dose. If you're purchasing a product that's specifically designed for pets, you know, that's gonna be your safest bet because it's already calculated. And then even still start with a lower dose. And then if you don't have access to that or you wanna try something from the dispensary, choose something that is going to be um, as low THC as you can get it and as high CBD as you can. And then after you get it, go show it to um, a veterinarian or another medical professional so they can talk to you about it and help you dose it specifically for your pet. So what would you say is the milligram dosage uh, 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 per pet? Like if someone asks you how much should I give, is there a, a number, a yeah. ballpark range? So there, there is a range. We all know that CBD is safe. There are no animals that have died from CBD. Many animals that do get like cannabis toxicity, it's from getting THC or chocolate or caffeine. And so most people will start with a very low dose around like 0.1 mg per kg or even 0.5 mg per kg. But I've seen dosages for cancer patients and animals that are like really debilitated as high as 5 mg per kg. So it's a very, very wide range. I tell people start low and then you can always go up. The goal is to be able to get the maximum effect with the lowest dose because overdosing, you know, you only have so many receptors. So after yep. you can max those out, you're just going to have to wait. And then just for our viewers out there, I just want to clarify, when you say 0.5 meg, you're saying uh, 0 0.5 milligrams, 0 .5 right? And then per kilogram, right, of body weight. Okay, we just to make sure, because not everyone's on the metric system here, so <laughs> I just want to let our viewers know that uh, kilograms or pounds are different. And then also, when we're talking about concentration, making sure you have the correct milligrams per milliliter. I get a lot of clients who bring me products and they're like, oh, can you help me dose my pet? I'm looking at the bottle, I have no idea how many mils 
milligrams are in, milliliters are in the bottle and how many milligrams per milliliter in the bottle. And the only way that you can get the effect that you need is by accurately dosing. So having that information is imperative. And don't buy a product if they're not going to tell you how many milligrams per milliliter, which is why we have you guys, because you're telling yep. us the great products out there that we need to be looking at. Awesome. I agree 100 with 100% with that. My company Bailey CBD, we try to be as transparent as possible with our labeling to ensure that pet parents are giving the correct dosage and they don't get turned off by, you know, maybe not doing it correctly. So, yeah, I, and that I'm was that was to awesome. Try your product in the future as well, because oh, my cat sure. and my dog and my horse, they all use it. We may have the in. I'm just saying, <laughs> we might have the in on this. We might be able to take care of you there. A little bit, maybe. <laughs> just maybe. I'm just kidding. Now, now, here's the thing. Pet CBD is so new, right? And obviously, pets are not like humans, and they can't talk and be like, oh, it's working, it's not working. How do you know that when a, a, a pet CBD product is being administered properly, um, how, how do you know that your pet is actually getting the benefits of that CBD? How do you know it's working? So I tell anybody when you start a new um, product, one, you want to have a baseline, so that means, baseline means how is your pet feeling when they're not on any medication and write that down. Then you're going to start with your dosing each day, giving the amount that's been prescribed or recommended for you. And as you're taking that medication for your dog, watch them. Like, you're the best person to look at and see how your animal is responding to any type of drug or any type of food. Are they, if they're limping, are they limping the next day? If they're limping, are they limping the same amount? Do you find that they're able to get up and move around if they're not eating? Are they eating when you give them the product? Or for a lot of pets that are getting CBD, they are just anxious. They have so much anxiety. And, you know, either the owner's going to work and they're anxious mm. or it's for Fourth of July or something else. And so in those cases, you can really tell because after you administer the medication, either they're going to calm down or they're still burning. Like, it's pretty clear. <laughs> true that, true that. Thank you. I Yeah, that's... That's very clear. Um, so I, I also uh, wanted to, to ask you real quick about your this uh, fundraiser for the 2019 uh, Audubon uh, Birdathon. Can you please uh, talk about that a little bit? Oh yeah. So recently I got elected as one of the youngest members on the Portland Audubon board. Um, so I was yeah. Yeah. One round of applause that's viewing right now. Getting a lot yes. of hearts out there. Yeah, getting tons <laughs> of hearts. <Yay. laughs> um, and the Portland Audubon, many people know the Audubon for birds. They they know that they love birds, and they do love birds, but they're really known for conservation and protecting the environment and really wanting to help keep Oregon um, clean, you know, fighting for climate change. And every summer, they do what's called a birdathon. This is my first year doing it, you know, so I don't know how many people in Oregon um, are birding. I am a birder in my backyard, but I will be going out to the remote areas of Oregon all over it looking for birds with some very, very experienced birds. I don't know if y'all have seen a black woman bird before, but it's gonna be the time to see it now, because I will be out there. And we have to, um, we kind of decide how many birds we're gonna see. I thought 100 would be a good way to start, and I'm trying to raise $800. Ooh. I'm gonna be going for three nights, so I chose the maximum number. I'll be staying out in the wilderness, and our team will be the Laggerhead Strike, so named after the Loggerhead bird, but they like beer, so they switched it to Laggerhead. So <laughs> please, if you wanna see me um, birding, I'm gonna be documenting everything. I'd love for you to follow my experience, and I'd love for you to donate and give a gift to the Audubon because we can really, really use it, and we would appreciate it because we just try to save the earth. That's me. So, where would be the best place that you can let our viewers know to support you directly and to watch this happening? Is there a site, uh, social media? Where should they go? Yeah. So, if you want to go to my site, first go to my Instagram page, dr. Jasmine Chanel. And then when you're on there, just click the link in the bio. It will take you to my Portland Audubon page specifically for me. You can read my story about how I got involved with birding and why I love it so much, why I support the Audubon and all the education that they're doing. And, you know, if you feel compelled, I'd love for you to join and give me a little gift and I can get a shout out. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. No, nice. no. Yeah, we will most definitely be on top of it. And it's so funny that you're talking about birds and you're in Portland. Kind of off topic, but I'm sure you hear this a lot, right? But about the short, the show Portlandia. 
<laughs> you get that? Okay, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. that a lot? Okay, yeah. There's there's that one episode where they're like, put a bird on it, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is, you're the much cooler version of it, you know. But uh, just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> um, and so. Um, thank you so much for that. So everyone, please go check out her bio and her Instagram. I think we can have somebody from CBD Reviews um, post up and pin up her profile. So we'll go ahead and do that for you so people can uh, directly support you. And uh, I guess like the last thing we wanted to ask you, and maybe Aaron has something to ask as well after this, so maybe the second to last, but uh, whether it is uh, in Involved in CBD or in anything, what are new developments that are happening right now in the veterinary community that are like big breakthroughs? Um, and it doesn't have to be CBD related. Yeah, so one is going to be CBD. That is the biggest thing that I think that's really taking over. And the, and the interesting thing is it's coming up from more of a grassroots perspective from the clients coming in and, the, and their pets wanting to know more, where generally things happen from the veterinary perspective going down. Um, the other big thing that's going on within the veterinary community is telemedicine. So, you know, mm. millennials like myself, like you guys, we want to stay in our house. We don't want to leave the couch, but we still love our pets and we want them to have the care they need. And so telemedicine allows you, just like with humans, to call and talk with your doctor, let them see your animals, see what's going on, and then you can get a diagnosis without having to leave and come to the veterinary office unless you truly have to. So I would say that's one of the biggest things. And then last would be, um, which affects some people differently, but most of the veterinary community, the opiate crisis. Because the opiate crisis has affected many veterinarians in terms of mental health, a lot of suicide, but also it has affected um, the pets in terms of the care that we're able to provide them. And then still being conscious that people are using these medications and we want to make sure it's going towards the animal and not being used inappropriately. And so I think that in the future, CBD has the potential to kind of offset the opiate crisis, and I look forward to learning more about that. Yeah, that's oh, that's, that's awesome. really awesome that you that you are aware of that and that you guys are taking that into consideration. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, oh, that's that's perfect. I I have uh, one more question for you. Um, so is there ever a situation or a circumstance when you would not recommend? Uh, hemp derived CBD for uh, for a pet? Yes. I would not recommend it if they had a known allergic reaction to it. So that would be um, more than likely. If I knew for a fact your animal was specifically allergic to cannabidiol, um, I would not recommend it. And what is the rate of that ever happening in your practice? <laughs> Okay, I'm just wondering, yeah, I was wondering if that was something... No, I, I haven't seen it, I haven't seen it. Um, okay. Yeah, so if they had a negative reaction, it would be, and that would be not just for a CBD, but for any drug. If you have a no negative reaction or we give you a small amount and you have a reaction, um, that's abnormal or um, unusual, then yeah, we would not recommend it. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think that's a good question. Yeah, that's Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I love it. Uh, and then and someone had a question, is THC bad for animals or can they use full spectrum? So it depends. For the entourage effect to work, you have to have THC, all your other flavonoids and terpenes, but you worry about your animal having too high of a THC. I have seen in cancer patients where they have used a combination of THC and CBD. Again, though, your THC dosage is going to be much, much lower than your CBD dosage, and I will recommend definitely getting with a, a, like a primary care provider to make sure that you're getting those um, those consistencies and concentrations right. But yeah, it can't you can't have a full a full spectrum use for um, for our CBD and THC together. And thanks for jumping on that question right away. Yeah. You know, I say, boom. So <laughs> uh, this is actually going to be our segue. So we're going to give an opportunity to our viewers here to ask any question uh, that you like. Please make sure that they're appropriate. Um, and uh, she's going to go ahead and answer them for you today. And so uh, I know that people have been answering, uh, sorry, answering, asking questions throughout uh, the viewing. So we'll just go ahead and just wait for some questions right now. If you've already asked one, just go ahead and ask again, please. Um, so we'll just go ahead and wait for this to populate. Usually you got to charge for this kind of action. She, she's just here answering on demand. Right. <laughs> so the first question here is, 
Does CBD interfere with uh, blood pressure medicine? So I guess if there's blood pressure medicine for, for pets. That is a really good question. Uh, and honestly, I'm not sure. So what we'd have to do is take a reading of your animal's blood pressure beforehand, you know, give the CBD and then take a reading of the blood pressure after. That's how I would determine whether or not there is an effect to that. Oh, what, one thing to jump in on that. Uh, last week we sat in uh, with a pharmacist in New Jersey, um, Dr. John Kim, and he did bring up that blood pressure medicines he found have had uh, a, a way of uh, making the medicine, the blood pressure, or the CBD has, has a way of making the blood pressure, pressure medication uh, not break down as fast oh. or metabolize as well. Metabolism yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think it was the drug, one of the drugs like Plavix or something. Plavix was one of them, yeah. Yeah, Plavix, I think it was one of the ones he, he brought up. Oh, okay. Yeah, Plavix. And, and we're not using that one in uh, veterinary medicine. But yeah, if, if the pharmacist believes so, I will definitely take his advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next question that we have here today is, uh, have you ever seen a toxic overdose of CBD? I think you answered this before already, so it was no, right? Yeah. It was no. Correct. No, I have not seen a toxic overdose of CBD. So we'll go ahead and go on to the next question here. Um, this one is from Madam Sunflowers, who uh, is really good at winning. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how to approach veterinarians who are not familiar with CBD? Um, yes. Yeah, so I would tell you to approach your veterinarian um, carefully but confidently, because mm. the goal is to get a veterinarian who is going to understand where you're coming from. You don't want a veterinarian or any professional who's going to judge you, especially when you're just trying to provide the best care for your pet. So, you know, just kind of, um, I would say, giving them a statement like, hi, I'm interested in using CBD for my pet. Do you have any information for me? Or, you know, what are your thoughts on CBD? Or are you knowledgeable about CBD? Because many veterinarians are hesitant to speak on it one, depending on what state they're in, if it's legal or not. And two, if they're not comfortable about it because they're not knowledgeable. So you don't want to put someone in a situation where they're giving out inaccurate information or, you know, you think they're not interested, but really they're just misinformed. So first starting with, you know, what are your thoughts about CBD or cannabis and are you knowledgeable about CBD and cannabis? Okay, that, that, was, uh, that was awesome. Um, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Has there been any research on exotic animals and CBD, such as guinea pigs and lizards? Guinea pigs? And, well, I was actually in laboratory animal medicine uh, residency before I joined my practice, and many of the studies that were done on uh, cannabis or cannabidiol were with rats and, you know, other rodents. So there have been studies published on rats and rodents. In terms of using it in general practice setting, I'm not familiar with it, especially with reptiles. They have a very different metabolism than mammals do. So I would, you know, caution you on using it in your reptile. But animals with a higher system, um, you, you know, mammals, I've seen it benefit horses. I've seen it benefit dogs. I've seen it benefit cats. So those are the species that I'm most familiar with. But hopefully in the future, we'll have more information if, as the laws change because we'll be allowed to do more research and, and more studies. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I didn't know uh, I didn't know that about lizards and guinea pigs. <laughs> um, so, so, the, yeah. <laughs> so the next question that we have here is uh, one one person asking CBD oils uh, they're finding are different colors. There's clear. There's yellow. There's green. Um, is there a reason for that? I don't think she. Um, I'm not. I'm not familiar. Only when I get it, it's in the dark vial, and so when I'm pulling it up, mine is sure. normally like the. Amber color, but I'm sure they can be different consistencies depending on which oil you're using. So if you're using like a coconut oil, if you're using a hemp oil, it's going to be green. If you're using coconut, it may be white. Um, we're using apricot or avocado, so it really may depend on the base that you're using with the um, CBD product that's added to it that determines the color. But as long as you've got that labeling information, it shouldn't change your effects. 
And, and you're absolutely correct. Uh, uh, we obviously are, are both in CBD, so there's a lot of factors. It could depend on whether or not it's an isolate base. If you just use coconut oil, it's going to come out clear. If you're using a, uh, you know, obviously a more full spectrum crude, it's going to come out green because you still have those, the chlorophyll in there. Or even brown. Right, even brown. And yeah. then also depending on the carrier oil they're using as well. So it could be isolate based and still be kind of green if you're using just a hemp oil. So really it's not based off of the colors, but what you just said exactly, what is the testing, what's actually being used, and do they clearly state what that is, which is the most important. So it's not just based off of the color, but based off of what they're actually making with and whether or not they're clearly stating that. So the next question that we have here is from Cannabidol. Uh, do other animals besides mammals benefit from using CBD? Ooh. It's possible that they can. I feel like um, if, as long as the animal has an endocannabinoid system, I believe there was a documentation that slugs have an endocannabinoid system. And so for any animal that has an endocannabinoid system, I feel like there are definitely um, there's a benefit if they're, giving, if they're getting CBD or any of those products. Like right now, we don't know because of the research, but just in theory, if an animal has an endocannabinoid receptor, and then they should be able to bind with the cannabinoid. Therefore, depending on which cannabinoid they're working with, there may be some benefit for them. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. that's that was pretty clear. Yeah, I said slugs. I said slugs. Oh, uh, nice. Wait, so slugs have endocannabinoid systems? You're saying? Yeah, there's been some studies that show that slugs have one, and I thought that was so cool. That's really? That is really cool. Yeah. So they just like get a bunch of slugs and start pumping up like uh, cannabinoids into them? Like how they do this? Was it like a slug roll, like a slug circle, they passed one around, like a slug joint? Just slime its way onto it. You're sure you're not referring to uh, UC Santa Cruz students, right? Because uh, their mascots are a slug, so. And you, and you know what they're doing up there. And they're up north, so okay. All right, guys. So we have any more questions question. here? One last question. Uh, any advice for um, for, 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 for nervous students? For students. Oh, oh sure. Um, good question. Yeah, uh, we just have someone out there. Do you have any uh, tips on people that are looking to become veterinarians? Oh, I do. I'm going to tell you. Find a supportive group and do some supportive friends and a mentor and get as much experience as you can, not just in a veterinary clinic, but anywhere where there are animals and really focus on the sciences and that. So summer programs that you can do, uh, really having the story that differentiates you from other yeah, people. So good. people don't want to hear, I just it's like dogs and cats, you know, giving them something else on what really drew you to the profession. And then staying optimistic, I would say, it's really the big thing. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not smart enough, you know, that you're not knowledgeable enough, that you're not going to make it because their best friend, sister's cousin didn't make it. You know, I tell everybody, stay strong, stay confident, know that you are great, because especially for women, we have a tendency to kind of have that imposter syndrome. So knowing that you're already brilliant, you're already intelligent, and you can go for the goal. Even if it takes you multiple tries, even if you have to go around in circles, even if you have to go a different route than the standard straight route, stay on the course if that's what you want, you know, and it can be your reality. It, it is for me, and I'm, I'm no genius. I'm just a regular person who enjoys reading. Very motivated, Ooh. by example. And look where you are right now, and that was that was so inspiring. That was very inspiring. Yeah, you're good on camera, by the way. <laughs> Seems like you've done this quite a few times. Never give up, right? If you're out there and you... Never give up. Really? You're good. You're very, very good on camera. I just want to let you know that because sometimes people just drone on for a little bit and you most definitely are on the point. So we do appreciate that. Um, and so it looks like we're done with the questions. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we are going to go ahead and ask a question out to the viewers. Let's see if you're actually listening. And so what we're going to do, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do a raffle. So obviously, all right, so uh, we're going to ask a question and we're going to raffle off a 150 milligram Bailey CBD full spectrum phytocannabinoid rich tincture. Um, so this is going to be for those who are paying attention out there. Oh, we, we, we lost doctor here. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, so if you are paying attention, uh, you're going to know this fairly well. Um, what other 
animal outside of the mammal kingdom has an endocannabinoid system that Dr. Jasmine just went over. What is this? What is this animal? You can that has an endocannabinoid system that isn't a mammal that Dr. Jasmine just brought up. <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. Uh, I think we're gonna give this one to Sam I am. <laughs> Sam. Sam I am! One three one three one. You are the winner. Sam I am. Sam I am. If you could go ahead and please make sure to follow CBD.how, send in the DM. They're gonna get you in and they'll connect you to Bailey CBD. Make sure to so, follow Bailey CBD as well. Oh, you have to follow both. Alright guys. Hell yeah. Congratulations, Sam. Yeah. So yes, what do we have? What are we gonna do next year? What do we got? What here? else do we got? Dutch Natural. Woo! 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 Eight hundred milligrams. Eight. Full spectrum terpenes, some really good stuff. Eight hundred milligrams Dutch Natural. This is really good stuff. Uh, this is let's see. Two hundred and forty drops, richest in terpenes, best entourage effect. Well. Let's see here. Young Jen, you want to do the honors? So the next question that we're going to ask you right now is going to be also from Dr. Jasmine. And the question uh, that I'm going to be asking you today is, how do you know whether or not a CBD oil or any CBD product is working for your pet? There was a very specific procedure that Dr. Jasmine had talked about earlier in terms of how to know whether or not CBD may be working effectively for your pet. Let's see who's paying attention Let's see out who there. can pay attention, because this was an important one, guys. It's not just much, it's about just giving your pet something. It's about making sure that it's actually going to work. Sam Crystal, you are on it. Crystal underscore M underscore A. Administer and observe. No adverse reaction, no allergy, mm. all right, all right. What do you think? So who was the first one to, to I, answer this? Administer was, and observe? Yeah. Is that close enough, you think? I think that's... I mean, that's administer and observe mm. what? What do you want to observe for, Crystal? Mm. Do you want to just look at your dog and be like, oh, it's working, or there's... <laughs> I want to give this to you, Crystal. Like, what do you, what do you mean by, <laughs> by observe? Observe what? Let's see. We're gonna let you. We're gonna give you a chance on this one because if you can't get that one, we're gonna have to give it. To I said baseline else. first. Ball girl. Yes. Yes, she did. All right. Wait, did ball you? girl? Did yes, you? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Dang. Yes, she Slipped did. Oh, yeah. ball girl. Wow. All right, yes, ball girl. Did. What have you won? You have just won Dutch Naturals 800 milligram CBD tincture. Yes, congratulations. Go ahead and DM CBD.how for your winnings. And make sure to follow Dutch Natural Healing, please, okay? Don't worry, Crystal. We got more stuff to give away. Crystal won. We ain't done yet. Right, we're not we done not yet. We not done yet. So the next uh, item that we're going to be giving out is going to be from Bio. CBD Plus. This is all natural, non GMO, mm -hmm. sustainable. It's vegan <laughs> and it's fast acting, scientifically formulated, no prescription required. Bio CBD topical CBD oil is scientifically formulated to penetrate deep into your muscles and joints, going directly to the root of where support is needed. Wow, guys, they really used all the space they could use for writing. <laughs> um, to apply, rub oil gently into the skin as needed. But just so you know about the uh, ingredients, organic hemp oil, CBD, curcumin, white willow bark, ginger, and eucalyptus. So mm. this formula is supposedly really good for muscle and joint support oil. Dang, these guys are not fucking around. They all are right. not fucking around. Wow, so this stuff looks good. What are we gonna, what, all right, question. Question, question. Okay, let's, uh, let's do a little recap here. Uh, let's see. Okay. What? This is a good one. What company has plans to grow 3,000 acres of CBD rich hemp on Navajo grounds? 
Ooh, that's a that's a difficult Navajo thing. Nation partnered with this company. They are a Canadian company. A yes, they are partnering to bring together 3,000 acres of CBD-rich hemp on Navajo Nation. Who is this? Definitely not Fibonacci. Sorry. Good guess. It's very close. Different company. <laughs> I know someone out there knows this. That was pretty good though. Good guess, Fibonacci. Excellent question. They're gonna, they're gonna get it. All right. Let's see. Mmm, it's pretty tough. Who's the senator who's the hemp the farm bill? There Let's see. Who's the senator that push it for the farm bill? The leading senator. We talked about him twice already. Go okay. to cbd.how, guys. cbd.how. Who is the leading senator behind the farm bill 2018? Who is this? He's a big player in big government. Talked about him tonight. Talked about him twice this evening. Senator that's backing the farm bill. We all know this Starts guy. Starts with turtle. Yes. Oh, Crystal! Oh. Damn, Crystal, you are on Wow, it. okay, Crystal. You so see, this is what happens, guys, when you don't <laughs> give up. Crystal could have been like, fuck this. This is rigged. She could have left the channel. But she didn't. She stayed and she won. Perseverance, Crystal killing it. You knew what was up. Mitch McConnell, yes, he is the big dog. Fucking rile them in with the, the Kentucky right. boys. <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're referred to, but we've now coined the term on Hemp Hotline. You saw it right the here. The good old Kentucky boys. So our next giveaway here is going to be natural extract CBD. 200 milligrams of all natural CO2 extracted cannabinoid rich hemp oil uh, with terpenes. And so it looks like this is a 1,000 milligram cartridge that has 200 milligrams. It looks like it's a 510 thread. You could put it on anything. So for this one, the question that we're going to be asking here today is what state is going to have the factory that is going to be producing hemp wood? Don't mistake this with the state that is going to be doing it in terms of the company. All right. Lindsay. Good work, Lindsay. Okay. Kentucky, Kentucky. Lindsay, you're correct. <laughs> I love it. We, wow. got, we got Lindsay, oh, Crystal, people. and Valgirl here just like just going at it for these prizes. Lindsay. Look at that. We got Lindsay for the W. You have won yourselves a natural, natural extract, extract. CBD.how. So follow CBD.how. Please follow Ooh. Natural Extract CBD. You need to be following both, so hit up CBD.how first and they'll refer you to here. Congratulations, Lindsay. Damn. So that was pretty intense. We just gave away, what, six different items? Do we have one more giveaway? Is that. Is we do, we do. Uh, we're going to be giving out another CBD pre roll, fresh crushed buds, organically grown. Uh, no crushed, I'm sorry, no trim, and never any shake. Uh, we are giving one of these out to a lucky winner if you can answer the following question. Is Aaron <laughs> single? <laughs> Anyone can answer this question. Damn, Damn bro. You're going to win Damn, one of these, bro. One of these CBD Dulce Hayes. <laughs> So Dulce is sweet uh, in Dulce. Spanish. <laughs> so Young should always put me on blast. <laughs> Wild roses, yes, hey. yes, and yes. Wild roses. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Made it known, like right? official. <laughs> so you are, uh, and you, so to so tell those uh, the viewers out there, is anyone particularly gonna have a chance? Uh, let's see. Uh, most likely not. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, this is a there's a very uh, extended vetting process. <laughs> <laughs> Just like when you enter the great CBD reviews community, there's a vetting process. <laughs> there is a vetting process to this heart. Okay, I just know that. Oh, no. I'm just yeah. <laughs> All right. So who was the first person to answer yes? Wild roses. Huh? Wild roses. Wild roses. Congratulations. You have now won a Phoenix CBD Dulce Haze. Pre-roll, terpene rich, please follow cd.how, send them a DM, follow Phoenix CBD, we're gonna hook you up. Great show, great show. Woo! Anything else? We got anything else here today? <laughs> All anything right, Jay. Else? All right, Jay. Yeah, right, <laughs> Jay.
We also are going to be auctioning off a... <laughs> Oh, this I, is great. These Irishmen? All right, we're going to be auctioning, auctioning off an evening with Young Jin. Yeah. <laughs> we have a one-on-one -on -one evening, anything goes type evening with Young Jin. Starting bid. Let's let's see. We got starting bid out there. First one out there, throw a starting bid. Let's say oh, no. let's say let's say fifty dollars. Oh, no. Let's say fifty dollars. Who oh, out there? No. Starting bid. <laughs> I did not agree to this, guys. Um, but because I believe in CBD so much. Whoa! Oh, what a bargain! Dollars. What a bargain! Anything goes. Tenses. Anything goes. <laughs> Cannabidol. What? Since when did you become my pimp? <laughs> anything goes. Already telling the viewers and that we're I already can do getting ten cents. I started the bid at fifty dollars. Five cents. Wow. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Lindsay. That means a lot to me, considering how much you've won. All you have is five cents. Wow. Six just cents. Six Damn. cents. Oh man, this is nice. Just Never to let just to let everybody know, we set the bar pretty high last uh, or two weeks ago when Youngjin auctioned off an evening with me for one hundred dollars. I think Jay got a, got a little more though, right? <laughs> Jay <laughs> Jay actually has the record right now at two hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, Youngjin, someone has to beat that two hundred dollars plus. Do I hear two fifty? This is a evening out with a small business owner that has a hemp thriving business. This is uh, this is as valuable as you can get. Usually, you got to pay double for this kind of action, but right now it's on a very low discounted price of two nut forty nine ninety nine. Oh man! Oh wow! Well, right. You can't handle her. Oh, oh damn! Well, hey, only one way to find out, right? <laughs> Woo! You gotta have to pay to play. <laughs> oh man! Wow. Well, guys. I guess uh... I guess we're gonna have to end this one on the lowest amount. That a man has ever received on the internet and the biggest blow to his ego at the same time. Great job, guys. Uh, I am sure that I'm going to want to come on this show again. We're feeling the love. We're feeling the love. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dodgeball reference. Dodgeball reference. Oh, oh man. Gosh. Well, it's okay because I'm just going to go back to dedicating my life to him. So it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, I'm going to go right back to dedicating my life to him and being healthier now. So thanks, everyone. Uh, I appreciate the five and six cents. I'm sure that's going to go a long way. As you know, you can buy so many things with five and six cents these days. So thank you. Two twenty-two. Oh, two dollars and twenty-two cents. Oh man. Oh, this that is great. Is great. Oh. Well, now I know I can afford a uh, maybe the third of a fast food meal with that amount. Thank you, Great CB, to reviews. I do appreciate you for having me on this show and showing me how much that you and the viewers really care when we're giving out like a thousand dollar worth of products but all I can get back is four to six cents. <laughs> Guys, that two dollars and twenty two cents was by the actual producer of this show. So please be aware that money was actually going to be used towards the production cost and because they felt so sorry for me, they it felt it necessary to give me that two dollars and twenty two cents because my feelings were so damn hurt hurt but it's okay I'm gonna move on I'm gonna make it happen and I'm just gonna cry in that corner over there <laughs> thank you guys I appreciate uh, it so so much I want to say thank you to Crystal to Lindsay to Val girl to everybody out there that was just on point with oh, all the Q&A just luck. crushing it um, and of course I want to thank everybody for uh, donating oh, their we got 20 one bucks. oh we got $20, 20 bucks, oh yeah. shit all right Oh wow! It's too you, late, guys. The window yeah, has been closed. Can you handle it? The supply was gone <laughs> once the feelings it was were hurt. It was so don't think here. that you can swoop in After with the a facts. twenty dollar bill <laughs> After the and facts. think that you're gonna be my savior because you know what? I'm worth more than that. <laughs> and just like Dr. Jasmine Sell, but remember what she said before: you're gonna have people that tell you that they don't believe in you, that they don't think you're doing enough. And Dr. Jasmine told me earlier: you know what? You still gotta keep on going. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna do. Know your value. Thank you, Dr. Jasmine. Yes. I appreciate that motivational speech that you gave earlier because it's the only reason why I'm making it this far. So thank you. So don't miss out next week when we hopefully break $20 and <laughs> we get Youngjin <laughs> auctioned off at a higher rate. Make sure to tell your friends and family. This is a this is an all-around discount deal. 
The prices are, are starting out low right now, so just to let you know this type of action will never be around again. You all just missed out by lowballing at one to six cents. So <laughs> one to six cents, bro, four cents. Oh, wow. <laughs> Even the co-host of my show has dis disvowed you to now the lowest amount a penny. I was worth at least four cents, and I went down four hundred percent, guys. Thanks everybody. That's I appreciate you. It's appreciate it's everybody so much. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, it's called love, you know what I mean? And we're feeling a lot of it out there, you know what I mean? With these four to six cents, so. <laughs> Alright, I guess we're gonna wrap it up, right? Thank you, Dr. John Chanel. So we're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna say hi to our studio audience right here. Woo! Looks like we got somebody in the house. Hey. Oh, that is Johnny inspired by official Canadis. And we have the founder of CBD Reviews and CBD.how. Appreciate you. Breaking the third wall here, we just want to say hi to everybody, a big heart. Make sure that you hit up CBD.how for those giveaways. And we will see you on the next show. Peace. Woo! Peace. Give him a kiss, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs>